I'm gonna, uh, I finally got a chance to go to sleep and think some things over. And this is one of the videos that I have not done in a long time about faith, having it, by the Bible scriptures. I kind of had lost my way for a minute, just want y'all to know that. And that's because I started to look at what's going on in the world. So I had to go and say, you know, my faith is normally stronger than this. So what's really going on? I'm going to put a couple of scriptures on here before I start talking. So y'all hold on for a minute. Y'all can go back and y'all can read it because it says for you to read and get your understanding. So not to just follow mine, but sometimes you need something to help you get through the day. And, you know, a lot of us go through stuff and we don't have anybody to help us get through it. But I've learned that you need somebody whose faith is stronger than yours or greater than yours at that time to help you get to where you need to be. Hold on, y'all. I'm putting it up here. I probably should already put it up here, but I got one more. Matthew 20, 6. So, y'all can go back and look at them, read them, and it may help you get through something. All right, so, anyway, I'm sitting here, and I'm thinking, I know I told y'all the other day, I said I had the question, like, where are you? What are you doing? Do you see God? What's going on right now? You know, why are we going through this? Why are we constantly, why is the world in such a disarray? So I started to look and I said, well, who else has had, has doubted God that, you know, since we read the Bible and, you know, stuff like that, who else has doubted? I said, so the first one I found was Luke 22 and 42, where even Jesus, while he was in the rock, you know, he had started to doubt his own mission, although he was so confident in the stuff that he did, stuff that he talked about. He said, Father, if, if you are willing to take this cup from me, he questioned his, he questioned his, um, place in the whole plane or then when you read numbers 21 through 13 and then when moses doubt god as uh he was uh, as he was assigned to like to hit the rock to you know to make the water come out of the rock so you got to read that 21 through 13 it's a lot hey aj you know i struggle i'll be trying my best to come back and get us some stuff up together so we got judges 6 36 through 4 that's when gideon uh and the fleece when god gave gideon a direct order he said well if this is you he said, I want it to rain. I'm going to put this fleece out here. And I want the whole ground to be wet. But I want the fleece to be dry. So God did. He said, God don't get mad. He said, but tomorrow, he said, I want it to rain. I want this fleece to be wet and the whole ground around it to be dry. So he did the opposite for him. And, you know, even when you had Jonah, he gave Jonah a sign and Jonah ran from him. Because he, he thought that, Jonah thought that God was wrong. Why are you trying to save this wicked land? Why do you want me to go over here and get him this message? So he ran to the point where, you know, he ended up being swallowed up by the whale. So I said all that to say, when you, when he tell us, he said, all you need is a faith the size of a mustard seed. And I hear people say that no matter what they go through, hey, honey, that they'll never doubt God. If you are a human being and you are going through something over and over again, you have doubted him. You are laugh. You say you have not. I don't see now. I think is so many of us try to be one way. We want everybody to think that we are living the life everyday Christian life. We want everybody to think that every day we get up, we have no doubt. I get up every day and I just thank God for all that happened. It don't matter who died. It could be my mom, my dad, my child could have just died, but I don't lose my faith. If anybody said they are a lie and the truth is not in them. Although we know that death is a part of life, you ain't going to tell me that you got up this morning, your mama gone, and you still say, but I thank God anyway. You will lie. Because you're going to fall on your face, and you're going to cry, and you're going to want to say, why them? Why this person? Why that person? And for anybody that tell you that they do not, they, the truth is not in them, they need to depart from you. Nobody has faith that strong that they do not question it. Thank you, Cam. Nobody. And I tell y'all that I have read the Bible over and over again. I've read in different versions. I've had different different kind. I've had to study the Bible. I've had a uh, Bible study. I've learned from, like I said, different people. Christians, Jews. Uh, I've learned from Jehovah Witnesses. I've learned from everybody because I do not turn anybody around. Even the Muslims, I've learned from them. So when somebody tell you that they never waver, or no matter what they go through, you go through the loss of a child. I've done it. I've lost several. Still born and everything. You going to tell me that I, I always thought that this was God's plan? No, I didn't. But it had to take somebody 
that I had already been through something. To come back and tell me, Loretta, it's going to get better. But even when I did not see that it was going to get better, somebody was always there to let me know that it would be. I have, like I said yesterday, I have been through so much stuff in my life that in any given time, when I do stop believing, it's a reason for it. And then today, I said, Loretta, even before somebody said something to you about the Bible, you always was drawn to it. I was drawn to the spirituality of God. You know, not even before I started reading it. I was drawn to something that got to be a greater power. So nobody put that in me. But because it was not instilled in me from the little bit of something uh, up until who I am right now, I still waver. A lot of us still waver because half of us don't know what religion is. Half of us have not. Nobody sat down and read the Bible to us every night. Nobody had us to read scripture, memorize scripture. So when it comes to time to pray, most of us saying, well, how do I pray? How do I pray? Then the response is, well, talk to him like you talk to everybody else. Okay, if I talk to him like I talk to everybody else, then we finna really have a conversation. So when you're going through something and at that very moment, you won't know why is this like, why am I designed like this? Why is this the cup that I receive? Why is this what I am feeling? There's nothing wrong with that doubt that you have because guess what? He said just have the faith the size of a mustard seed. All he needs you to have is a little pebble of faith. So if all you need me to have is a pebble of faith, that means you know I got 99% doubt in me. If I only got 1% of faith in me. So when you are going through something, like we are all going through something at this current moment, we're all questioning why this person, why does it have to happen to me? Why does it have to happen to her? Why does it have to happen to him? Why the baby's so young? Why this? Why that? He didn't say, you cannot. He said, who are you to question me? Where were you when I created the stars, the moon, the heaven, and the earth? Now, one time he said, you cannot or you better not. So do not feel like you're less of a person. So many times we go to church and the pastor only speaks about the good things that happen. They only speak about how you will be blessed. They only speak about, you know, uh, who did this, how they, how they part the Red Sea. But you don't talk about when Moses had his own fear. Moses saw God part the Red Sea, but he still had doubt that God would give water to the people. Water. Well, he has split a whole ocean. But I am fearful that you will give them a water to drink. Jesus saw miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And he still walked up into the garden and he cried and he said, If it's your will to remove this cup from me. That's because Jesus walked in the flesh. He just skinned his knee before. He know what it's like to hurt your knee. He know what it's like to hit your foot on the end of the bed or, or like the couch. He know what that feels. That's pain. So imagine me have to lay and scratch myself out for this grateful, ungrateful people and you are sticking nails in my wrist and in my feet. He knows what physical pain is. That's why he was like, I don't know now. You know, I, I know you're not wrong, Father. I know you're not wrong. And you've been right to this point and I've seen you raise people from the dead. Some of that stuff was for Jesus, uh, uh, his strength. He knew he had to die. Therefore, Jesus had to see God raise people from the dead. Because in his fleshly manner, although they say he was a perfect man, he still knew what the harsh reality would be. Every miracle that was performed was performed to build his faith as well. We don't know nothing about Jesus from the time he is 12 to he is 30. So what happened between those 18 years? Something happened. Because if his life was peaches and cream, he did not struggle. He would not have to go through all that to go somewhere to the, go and be cleansed again. To go out into the desert to be washed again. To fast from all of his sins. The Bible that we hear is not all that's in the Bible. They want us to think that every story was perfect. It was not. It was not. When he walk up, you walk up to a burning bush that talking, you're going to believe in that bush that talking? You're going to be trying to look around and say, who that is out there? Who's a, who's a ventriloqu ventriloquist behind this? So it, it, it gets me when I run into those perfect Christians. Or I run into those people that have that perfect faith. They've never had any doubt in the world. So then that makes you question who you are. Well, maybe I'm not doing it right. Because I got some questions. No, you are doing it right. 
There's nothing wrong with having a question. There's nothing wrong with wondering why am I constantly going through the same thing? Why can't I get right? What's wrong with my thinking process? What's wrong with me today? God, you created me like this, so what's the problem? But then you had the perfect creature say, just pray about it. It's more than praying about it. If prayer fixed all of our problems, we would not have no problems. When I got up this morning, I said, Lord, I want to have a perfect day. Did I have a perfect day? I did not. Have I had a perfect week? I have not. Have I had a perfect year? No way. So I know that prayer is not, it didn't, this is not what I pray for. So I'm still looking for the day when you say he may not come with you when you want him, but he'll be there on time. If that's the case, what is on time? So I asked him to spare my life and you die. I'm in a car accident and I said, Lord, save me and you lose an arm. You saved me, but I lost my right hand. Well, that's okay. You still got your left hand. I've never done anything with my left hand. So now I got to start all over again. You saved me, but I lost my left leg. I don't have a right hand. I don't have a left leg. So I'm around here. I'm imperfect now. All I can see is the outside of me. So you cannot expect me as a human being, as a true for human being to say that I have not questioned him. I don't care what pastor you have. I don't care how long you've been saved. Baby, you done had some days you had to start over. And the thing that makes a lot of people turn away from church is when you got the ones that say, Every day is a good day. Every day is not a good day. Every day is not a good day with them. And just because I speak it's a good day does not mean that I feel that it's a good day. We have to start being truthful about how we really feel. If I can come to you as a human being, I can address you about how I feel and say, you know what, Lamb, that was real messed up. But you my girl, though. But as soon as I say that was real messed up, I'm going to stop talking to you. I ain't going to tell you that was messed up and come back in your face and say, high five, girl. We had to get that off our chest. Because that may not be the relationship that we have. It may be that she, she know, I understand why she did that, but I'm done talking to her. I see you and I try to be cordial. That's the same relationship that you're going to have with God. I understand why he let that happen. But for right now, I'm on a break. I need a sabbatical. I'm on a time out. If our preachers would sit down and go through the whole Bible and not pick and choose the stuff he talk about in the Bible, a lot more people will follow it. You cannot nitpick what you want to tell somebody. I cannot just tell you about how he rescued the people from the land of Egypt, but not tell you how they got in Egypt. I cannot skip the part about how he, how Joseph was a man of God, but why he believed in, why he was a man of God, he was sold into slavery. He was beat by his brothers. You no, know, he was, somebody lied like he raped them. He had stuff that happened. He was in prison for no reason. But the Bible saying God was with him. So you with me while I'm in prison? You with me while they beat me and leave me for dead? You with me while my brothers sell me into slavery? You with me? So you mean to tell me that Joseph never questioned that? And although he did all of that to bring him to Egypt, really, he did all that to get Joseph to Egypt. So 400 years later, you can rescue your people from the people that the place that you put them in. But they was in a good place. They was prospering. His family had nice things. And you brought me here to bring my father here, all his sons here, so they can start having family. And then, it's so many, they are so fruitful that they multiply that the nation who had invited us here are now in fear of us because we outnumbered them. So then you put us, they put us into slavery. Slavery is a mentality. How can 200 people enslave 400 people? Slavery is a mentality. How can 200 people enslave 600 people? Slavery is a mentality. It's about inferiority. If I am inferior to you, you can do whatever you want to do to me. And that's the everyday thing for a lot of us. Our mindsets keep us enslaved. But you're not going to tell me that I'm supposed to believe that this is your plan for me. I'm sick of all of us that want to be perfect. Nothing ever happens. You got the Christian that get up and they have a do die day. The do die Christian is a liar. So when things happen to us, real life, we are going to question it. It is our design. We're not going to be happy. 
we're going to wonder why is this happening to me. So if I stand before a congregation and I tell you that every day for the rest of your life is going to be perfect, you need to get up out that congregation, walk out the nearest door, get in your car, and drive home as fast as you can because that is the lie and the truth ain't in it. So if you woke up this morning and you question why something happened, know that you are not the first person and you would not be the last person. But if a person tell you, and see, Lamb, and that's real life, but you're still supposed to pray about it. Or when I lose my best friend, you say pray about it. I'd be like, well, what my, my best friend got up every morning and they didn't eat pork. You know, they prayed every day. They got on their knees. They thank you. They bowed down. Then they say, oh, well, God picked his best soldiers. I was not ready for the best soldier to leave. So how do I not say, why her? Why would you take the person that lives their life perfectly? Why would you take the person that gives to the community, does charitable things like you said, they help the poor, they give the coat to the poor? Why this person? That's human nature. When you go into school, you don't believe what the teacher says. You raise your hand and say, uh, can you explain it? We can raise our hand for everything, but we can't raise our hands and say, God, really, I'm tired. What's really going on? Again, faith the size of a mustard seed. Because he knows you out of a hundred, you're going to run out of 99. All he needs you to do is to keep holding on to know that there is a God. He say, I'm coming. But sometimes it's not when I need you. The ones that have prayed about not being evicted and they come home and they're still, still sitting out. They still waiting on you at the last, at the midnight hour. God's going to turn around. That's all your pastor tell you. He going to turn around. He going to turn around. But then, why you say he going to turn around? Y'all forget you got to go get a job. This is not the land where you can just go somewhere and plant a tent and y'all just live off the land. You are in a place where you got to pay a man some rent. So what do I have to do to pay rent? God ain't writing checks. You got to go get you a job. That come down to the Super Bowl. You got two teams. You got two men that believe in the same God. And they're both praying that we win the Super Bowl. I'm praying, you're praying, everybody in the locker room praying. So you got a hundred people praying. You got people that's outside in TV land, they're praying. You got people that's over here in, in whatever state they come from, they're praying. They're praying, they're praying, they're praying. But then one team is going to lose. So what was the moral of that story? Oh, today was not your day. But you got the one team that make it to the Super Bowl five years in a row. And every year they go up against the same two people. So every year, the same two people continue to pray about the same thing. But every year, the other team always loses. So what that means? His relationship with God is better than mine. Does this not cause doubt about your relationship? No, we can't all win. At any given time, you're going to lose somewhere. As long as you live and you wake up above ground, you're going to say, not today, Lord. Not today. I want to get up and I want to thank you for waking me up this morning. Because I was in the land of the living. But you woke me up this morning in trouble, in fear, in doubt, in pain, in anguish, in confusion. But I know you love me though. You're not going to tell me that you're not going to have no fear. So when you go into the church, sometimes you got to ask the pastor, Lord, when we, pastor, when are we going to start talking about sons of Solomon? When are we going to start talking about how Solomon... Who created your temple. Decided to design 300 other temples. For other people to worship their God. When are we going to talk about that? He made the most beautiful temple for God. But they don't talk about how he created temples for the women that he was sleeping with. All of them. So here you were thinking. I got to get right. So you don't find out that Solomon died as a young man. Because even he was not right. But he's supposed to be the wisest person in the world. He asked for wisdom. He's the wise, But he made some dumb decisions. Did the wisdom run out? Why don't the pastor talk about that? How can I compare my real life story to a real life story? When all I hear about is the perfect thing. Except when Jesus was crucified. There are a lot of people that was crucified in the Bible. A lot. There are a lot of people that made some choices that they did not want to make. They talk about how Eli heard directly from God. But then, although you hear directly from God, you talk to him. You let your sons run around here and they sleep with everybody. They womanize. They terrorize in the town. 
But you don't talk about how he still was a man of God. He prayed, but it did not save his own sons. I need to know that that's a possibility. Because I need to know that my son may not be saved. But we so busy thinking that when a Christian says something going to happen, it, it does not. There are people that have different religions. And get what the Bible says, there are different religions. It acknowledges that. But you have folks in other religions that won't even acknowledge that this is real. That's life. We choose to believe what we choose to believe. But don't never think that even if you, you, are, you are a diehard Christian, that you're not going to have a good day. Innocent people go to jail every day. Every day. Innocent people die. From birth. Babies die. Babies are born. Still born. So you're not going to tell me that a person who has carried a life inside of them for nine whole months and the baby was kicking and you still think the baby is kicking. Y'all the name little baby. You done bought all these clothes. And you done, you done put. You rub your belly. Rub, you, feel the, you rub your belly every day. You done put this, um, like the, the bed together. Y'all done got the letters carved out. With his name Carson on the wall. You got this. You got that. And at the same time. You come home with no baby. So you going to tell me. That I'm not supposed to have a question. I do. What kills me, my spirit, and my mentality is when I get on here and I see people that I know not living right. And they quote scripture every day. They want to tell you how to live your life, but they live their life the opposite of what they're telling you. And somebody see it. And when that person see how you are living outside of what you're telling me, then they cause doubt for them. Then they go tell this person. They go tell that person. He said, according to the media, need to no group called Hebrews was never in Egypt. That Sam, we ain't gonna dispute that. You can you can make whatever comment you want, and I'm not gonna dispute it because guess what I said? That we have to, I have to respect what you believe. Just like you gotta respect what I believe. So I will never take whatever you believe away from you because guess what? When we both die, I don't know where I'm going to end up at. You'll know where you're going to end up at. So that's that period. So I don't question what nobody else say. When the Jehovah's Witness come to my door, I let them in my house. When the Mormons come to my door, I let them in my house. Whoever comes to my door and they talk about religion, I let them in my house. The only time that they cannot stay in my house is when we start to have a dispute. You cannot make me believe what you believe by canceling out what I believe. It doesn't work that way. The way to get a person to start paying attention to what you believe is by giving me, by bringing me, I love to read. Give me your book and let me figure it out myself. But when, this is what I don't like when a lot of people start to question the existence of was Jesus ever born? Did that ever happen? I don't like that. Because when I first started believing in Jesus Christ, nobody gave me a book. The feeling that I had when I was eight years old that I wanted to go to church. The music draw me to church. Nobody talked to me about the Bible. Nobody opened the Bible up for me. Nobody gave me the Genesis through Revelation. Nobody sat down talking about the creation of God. Nobody. So I don't believe in God because my mama said believe in him. I'm not a Democrat because my mama said be a Democrat. I am who I am because of what I feel in my spirit. So that has nothing to do with nothing else. That's why I am open to. Because he acknowledges. The Bible acknowledges that there are other gods besides him. Nobody else wants to acknowledge. So when you are someone who closes out everything else. I cannot believe what you say. I know that history is questionable. I know that everything that we read about history is not correct. But the thing is. Some of us say this is what it is. The history book. Does not have everything in it because if it did, the book would be a lot larger than 365 pages. There's no book that can have all of time in it. When I do my journal in my uh, diary, that section is my truth. I can leave some stuff out. I can add some stuff in. All you can do is read this letter that I wrote and go based off of that. See, that's why... I think a lot of us have a difference and we want to argue with each other is because I want to prove to you that you're wrong. My job is to prove to you that I'm right. Not to prove to you that you're wrong. That's how we mess stuff up. But when you go to work and they give you a evaluation, 
So I bring you into the office and I say, Loretta, today you did a good job. We're going to give you a raise. We're going to give you 50 cent because you did this, 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 and that right. So I'm all happy because I did all of this stuff right. And then the second part of the evaluation said, but you did this, 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 this wrong. So the thing about that is, how do you take good and turn around into bad? You can't do that. I think they battle when they give you an evaluation. So instead of walking outside of the office happy, all I, I don't think about the 50 cent raise. I don't think about all the good stuff that I did. I don't think about the customer service surveys. All I think about is what you tell me that I did wrong. But if you had to talk what I did wrong at first and said, but guess what? In spite of what you did wrong, we're going to still give you 50 cent because we saw you did this, 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 and this. Right. What that makes me do is turn around and I go and I try to figure out how to make myself better in the parts of me that nobody else liked. But instead, if I got to focus on it, I don't care, man, forget this job. I don't care about that 50 cent rate. That's all they try. They forget about all the good stuff because you overshadowed it. And he says, spirituality, we teach black women they are gods. The Bible says, let's create man and woman in our image. God has nothing to do with. Hebrews have nothing to do with the way we treat our women. The way women are treated is based off of the world evolution. Women have been treated like third class citizens at the beginning of time. You can go until you can go out of been Africa. I friend, I got family members that we have discovered that we have found in Africa. So when I tell you that just because you talk to them and you you say you stand before a king and a queen in Africa, and I treat her like she's a god, but even though she's a goddess, she is less than that king that sits beside her. So it don't matter what you teach them, it matter how you treat them. So because you are God, you're going to tell me that every day you are a God to me. I'm going to worship you. And you're not going to tell me that you ain't got mad at her. You're not going to tell me that you ain't said nothing to her that you should not have said to her. You're not going to tell me that every day you get up and you treat her like she's a God because that is the most beautiful thing in the world. And I would never do anything to disrespect her. That is a lie and a true thing in it. Nobody gets up and treat everybody the same way every day. We don't treat our kids the same way every day. We don't treat our parents the same way every day. We don't treat ourselves the same way every day. We want people to think that life is a box of chocolates, like a whole just whatever like you might you might like the chocolate with all the caramel in it, but you're not gonna get a box of chocolate with all caramel because you take the variety. And when you take the variety, you're gonna have some days that you do not like. You're gonna have some dark chocolate, you're gonna have some chocolate with nuts in it, you're gonna have the chocolate with the caramel in it, and then you're gonna have your favorite one may have a little strawberry cream in the middle. But he said, let's create man and woman in our image. So if he is a God created man and woman, what image does he create the man? A godly image. Do we walk around that way? We don't. My thing is reality. I never knock what people believe. I go in stores, I talk to people who worship the sun and the moon. And guess what? I ask them, well, why do you worship the sun and the moon? But they can't tell me why they worship the sun and the moon. They can't tell me about the history of worshiping the sun and the moon. They just say, this is what we do because this is what our ancestors do. And you do this, but you start to talk about me as a Christian. Get out of my face. Because you cannot tell me why you do that. You cannot tell. I can tell you that Abraham is the father of five nations. I can tell you that Abraham, is, he produced the Islam. He produced the Christian. He produced this. He produced, like, all I can tell you that that's where they come from. I can tell you that he had children with Hagar. And that's where this generation came from. I can tell you that Ish, Ishmael is the father of the, of the Muslim nation. So I don't doubt that. He said we'll be trying to prove ourselves all our days. We'll be against people all of our days. He talked about witchcraft, but some people say witchcraft ain't real. Witch is not real. He talked about ghosts. People say ghosts not real. So if the Bible is not real, it's the only real thing that I've read because other people do not acknowledge that. They think you can give somebody a Viking burial and that their spirit is going to be the ancestors with ancestors and they can pray to their ancestors. So I'm praying to dead people who didn't get it right. How is that logical? Where does that spirit go to? So talk to me about where the water come from. I'm telling you, I've had a lot of doubt and what makes me find my way sometimes is when I go on a cruise. I remember I was having a bad time and uh, I went on my first cruise. And we out there in the ocean and I, I was afraid. But when I looked out and I saw 
how beautiful the water was. The only thing I can look at and say, I know man did not create that. When I look at animals and I see how different they are, I say, man didn't do that. I don't care how many scientific labs you go in. I don't care what you try to put together to get a DNA and, and uh, duplicate a test tube, baby. You still did not create that seed that grows in me. You probably can make a woman pregnant that couldn't get pregnant, but at the same time, it, the egg got to take. I said all of that to say this. When you're going through something, you have to find somebody that has greater faith than you to help you get through. That's why I call to pull. That's why you pull back to grab somebody else. Because at any given time, we're going to be in a lowly spirit. He said, no, kings and queens are equal. The female fossil is the oldest ever discovered. This is the oldest ever discovered. So you tell me inside your house that you are second to your wife. Please tell me that. Inside your house, you are second to your wife. That's all I'm saying. So all this time on earth, you are second to your wife. Inside your household, if you and your wife go and, go, go and apply for a job today, your wife is going to make more than you if she picks the better job. She got the higher education. You are okay with that, being second. You're okay with being the nanny. You know, stuff like that. It's not in man nature. Just because he loves me. Does not he's okay, no, mean that he's okay with being second to me. Most men are born of a woman and still get woman in trouble. Y'all yeah, see what I'm saying? You inside your household. I want to know a man that is second to his wife. Not a man that does not mind being second. But I want the man that is second. I want the man that stand behind her. I want the man to tell me that I don't want a man like that. I need a man to be in front of me. I need a man to lead me. I need a man to guide me. That I already have that man. My question to you is because you said that um, kings and queens are equal. The female fossil is the oldest ever discovered, which means woman was there on earth first. I asked you, was you second to your wife? And if you are second to your wife, see, but how are you equal? If she was the first. If I was the first creation, that means you second nature. So inside, even inside your home, you say that a woman is a God. So if she's a God, that means that you praise her. So that's what I'm saying. How our mentality tells us one thing, we do something else. If I'm equal to you, there's no praise. So there's equal admiration, but that doesn't happen. Nobody gives equal equal admiration. Nobody. In any relationship, somebody's going to love the other person more. At any given time, I'm going to be upset with you. You're going to love me more that day because I'm pissed at you than, you love, than I love you. Every day, we're not going to be equal. We we not. So I'm not trying to answer all the questions, but I'm telling y'all that if you have any fear and doubt in your heart about who you are, what your existence is, why is this happening, I want you to know that you're not the first. But a lot of us do not go to church because when we go to church or we go into these different places, that's responsibility. I'm not talking about, like, so you're talking about who pay the bills in the house, who do this, equal responsibilities. My question was, do you admire her? Or do you bow down to her since she's a God to you? That's my question. Yeah, a woman is creation because babies come through us. That's why they started trying to duplicate creation and make it without us. We have doubt. No matter what your religion is. No matter what. You can go into the synagogue. The synagogue, they tell you about the good and the bad. So you may find more humble people in the Muslim nation. I've said the back. I've paid attention. You go into a Jewish church, they talk about all of it from the beginning to the end. When we go into our churches, I think the reason why we get it wrong is because most of our pastors do not stand up in front of church and talk to you about when David had fear. They don't talk to you about you know, his days in the desert. We don't talk to you about when they had camped all around him. We don't talk to you about when Solomon, why Saul became the first king because the people of Israel started complaining, moaning, and groaning, and complaining. 
Man can't create life. Only one can. So without man, would there be life? Without you sperminating my state, my uh, embryo, would there be life? We, I cannot create life by myself. We create life together. So therefore, I can't be no more of a god than you are. Without you, I couldn't have any kids. See, that's that's what I'm saying. We can we can debate about it. My thing is that we are told that life is perfect when we read. The Bible, or, or we, because most of us not reading it ourselves, we are only going based on what the pastor tell us. Because half of us do not understand the King James Version. Or when he's standing in front of church, he talk about how will a man rob God, talk about Malachi, just through tithes and offering. We talk about when they cast their net, but do we talk about when he called him out the boat and he fell, he, he, he had no faith? He could not walk on water. We don't talk about the faith that he did not have. We don't talk about how they look for the storms or whatever raging. And they had to throw Jonah over in order for the storm to decide. Everybody was in fear. Everybody called their God. But it didn't work for them. So my thing is you're going to have times in life where you are questioning who you are, what you are. I don't do that. Whatever it is that you believe, just find something to believe in. Whatever gets you through that day, I know what I believe in on the days that I believe because I have doubt each and every day. But, uh, and I go back and forth with Sam. This is what we do, y'all. So, ain't no beef like that. He and I go back and forth all the time. But he keeps the mind going and I have to respect him for that because yet still, he's still a man. I can never doubt what he believes. He probably doubt what I believe, but I'm going to stand strong on him when there's somebody else going against it. I just have bad days. I have good days. And sometimes I have more bad than good. But you find somebody that has a greater has greater faith than you. You find somebody that went through what you're going through. You find somebody that has found the comfort in knowing that it was the right decision that was made at that time. And that they are at peace with this decision. That's what you find. You find somebody who's overcome cancer. You find somebody who has overcome molestation. You find someone who has overcome rape. You find somebody who has overcome murder of a loved one. You find that person and you ask them, how did you make it through? That's why you have support groups. You find somebody who's lost their mom. How did you make it? Was your life rough? You find them. I'm not telling you to cling to them for the rest of your life. But I'm telling you that at the time that you need them, just agree with the season that they come in and be willing to let them go when you have to let them go. Sometimes we dwell on things so long that we let life pass us by. Don't live your whole life and let it pass you by. It's okay to have fear. It's okay to have doubt. It's okay to question why. But just try to find an answer, basically. With that being said, thank you all for watching. Always good.